Hello, in this video session we are going to talk about the hemifacial spasm, about the etiology of this disease, about the symptoms, mechanisms, and the available treatment. My name is Dr. Kim Hagai, I'm a neurosurgeon, I work in Istanbul, Turkey. So, hemifacial spasm is a movement disorder um, which is presented with involuntary contractions of the facial muscles. Facial muscles, as you may know, they are very specific. They attach not to the bone, or not entirely to the bone, but they attach to the skin of the face. We use facial muscles to express our feelings, to talk, they are part of our articulation, and not only used for expression of our emotions and move the skin of our face. So when it happens, the facial muscles on one side, either the right or left side, getting involuntarily contracted. Usually it affects the whole muscles, like muscles around the nose, cheek, and around the eye. Sometimes muscles, the facial muscle, and they can be affected. The frontalis muscle in the forehead may be affected too. So it's mostly involuntary, uncontrollable contractions, twitching of the muscles on the half of the face. In this session, we're going to talk about the mechanism of the amputation spasm. So, usually the mechanism is due to irritation of the facial nerve at the brainstem. The point where the facial nerve takes off from the brainstem and then passes into the bone canal in the bone, the skull. So, Usually, it is due to compression of the facial nerve by a vessel that disrupts the integrity of the nerve fibers inside the facial nerve and causes the fatty transmission. When the impulse from one nerve fiber spread to another, and then to another, and the whole nerve is firing eventually, causing involuntary contraction of the half of the face. So, usually these contractions are triggered by normal motions like eating, chewing, laughing, anything that will move facial musculature. But instead of having a specific response, that all facial muscles are affected in a controllable manner, the patient has these spasms. So usually it's because of the compression of the vessel at the present level. In this session we're going to talk about the treatments available for inefficient spasm. So basically there are two treatments available. Either a Botox injection or a microvascular compression. Botox injection is performed to the facial muscles of the face. So Basically, it works in a pretty similar manner like Botox for aesthetic reasons. What it does, once injected, it paralyzes the muscle. It affects the nerves that innervate the muscles and damages those nerves and talks it, paralyzes the muscles so muscles can contract or twitch again. And by providing so, the uh, hemifacial spasm can get better because of the absence or decrease in muscle contractions. Unfortunately, Botox injections, they affect the last several months, max six months. Sometimes after several Botox injections, patients may have full recovery, but um, when it comes to treating the core problem of inflammation spasm, when the problem is in the, the brainstem, compression of the brainstem, 
obviously, the voltage is congestion with more pulp. Uh, with microvascular decompression, on the other hand, treats the very core of the problem. So, during surgery, we go around the cerebellum, within the cerebellum and the skull, to reach the facial nerve, right in this area where it takes off from the brainstem before it enters the neuroacoustic canal along with the beads nerve. And we find a vessel that is wrapping around the facial nerve and we separate the vessel from the nerve. And after separating, we insert a small kilo or piece of teflon felt in between the nerve and the vessel so the vessel will not compress it again so there will be something in between the nerve and the vessel so the vessel cannot hit the nerve and cause immunization spasm. Procedures is very successful it's successful in more than 90 percent of cases yet the procedure is associated with total surgery or brain surgery. Thank you for watching this video regarding communication spasm. You can always find more information regarding this disease and available treatment options on our website.